Uh, hi everyone, I'm Adam and I'm one of the co-conveners of the Digital Ecologies Workshop. And in advance of the conference, which is next week, the 29th and 30th of March 2021, uh, I'm going to be talking with Will Binley today about uh, the design process which went into um, creating the website and the online platform and the logo and all this sort of great things for uh, digital ecologies because I, I personally was quite um, blown away by the amount of thought that went into everything and how it speaks to the research themes. So uh, yeah, Will's going to talk with us today just really briefly about kind of the, the thought process that went into um, the website. So I've got I've got a few questions just prepared, um, just just to allow you to talk us through it really, Will. Um, so a question I've got written here is, as the Digital Ecologies Conference is happening online and concerns the digital and its relationship with the environment and the non-human and non-human nature, it was really important for us to have digital space that that was designed to reflect this. Can you talk us through your design process and how you ended up with this fantastic website? Please. I can do. Thank you, mate. Um, yeah, what I'll do, I've done a little kind of presentation that shows a few images and working processes of what we did for the website. Um, so what I might do is share my screen and then through that illustration, I can uh, answer your question, hopefully. Okay, can you see that? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so yeah, this is a little screenshot just of the website, just to show the kind of more finished version. Um, and kind of, I'm going to talk through how, how we got there. Um, it's been quite a nice process because in preparation for just having this chat, I was looking through old notes that I made back at the very, very, very beginning when we first kind of started talking about digital ecologies. And I was kind of beginning to get my head around what you guys were doing and then kind of trying to think if there were natural ways that that could begin to influence the design process. Um, but it's been nice returning to my notes and just seeing those early ideas and actually which of them didn't go anywhere and then which of them perhaps have kind of begun to inform and influence where we ended up arriving at. Um, what I'll do first is I'll show this kind of, this was early research that I, there's just a few things that I think actually really did go on to kind of inform very heavily what, what I was looking into. Um, so the kind of the key things that I really needed to get uh, certain was the kind of the typography that we were going to be using, the, if there's going to be any imagery, any color, that, what that palette could be, kind of get a bit of a, a feel going, all those working together. Maybe that would inform a pattern that could be created, et cetera. And then thinking about how that kind of exists on the kind of the digital platform as it being a website. Um, so when I was when I first started looking at kind of pulling things out, the kind of actually the early starting point, which funnily enough is a starting point or something that I've been heavily informed about largely in my design practice, is this what we see bottom right. Um, which is a button and it's an, a, kind of an early uh, example of kind of design in the environmental activist movement. I think it's from the 60s um, and it's, it's, I think it's beautiful. I think it's really, really beautiful. And what I particularly like, I don't know how well it shows up on your screen, but where it says if it's grey and that used the, just the type of the grey was really sticking with me and the, the fact that they'd kind of done this thing of... Um, showing that they were speaking about pollution without having to explicitly say as much. You can kind of do it more subtly. And then in terms of the application, the production methods, the kind of dots that are created and kind of how that kind of overall creates the, the design. Mm -hmm. The top three uh, images here are from an illustrator and designer called Adam Higdon. Um, and I kind of, I, I'm a big fan of his work. And it kind of, for me, exists a bit more in a kind of folk-esque way of looking at kind of environmental stuff. And, um, and he also does kind of some kind of comics and some children's stuff as well. So it felt like a little, it felt quite soft and quite, uh, it felt very welcoming and warm, which I, which I, which I enjoyed. Um, and there's, of course, the explicit way in which he was using kind of uh, 
details from the environment to very uh, explicitly inform his typography in this instance. So therefore like seeds and all the counters of the letters are in the shape of seeds in a kind of, or like uh -huh. a, an idealized shape of seeds rather. And then the bottom left is uh, Alex Walker and it's his works that he did for uh, Mammoth, which is a gallery in Rotterdam. Um, and this kind of felt the complete other end from that kind of more folky analog way what Adam Hayden's doing. And this felt way more digital and kind of like um, some in some way kind of 90s in that digital aesthetic and then in other ways kind of uh, very, very contemporary. But they, for me, there's a very clear link of kind of mythicism and kind of uh, utopia and it kind of feels very, it feels very joyous. There's, there's this kind of retro futurism to it. Yeah. Exactly, cool. exactly. And that, and that seeming contrast was something that I really, was in fact when I was saying what I was looking at my notes earlier, there's a lot of those things that I'd written down. So I guess one of the first things when we discussed about digital ecologies was that the two, like the name of it, it's, it's, a, great, it's a great name because it seems that there's a it's an oxymoron. It kind of as to the layman that I am. Uh, so I was kind of looking at those dichotomies further. So the things that I'd written down was digital slash nature, hard, soft, simple, complex, inorganic, organic, non-life, life computational, biological, viewer and viewed. So all these different things that seemingly are the opposites and actually there's so many of your papers and so, many, so much of what the conference is doing is actually kind of going, actually it's not that, that it's the kind of interesting bits in between. It's that gray space, the liminal areas, the overlapping, you know, all those different relationships, which is of course what ecology is ultimately, is all yeah. looking in, in that way. So then I was like, okay, that, that seemed quite clear to me, or quite a complex idea, but it seemed kind of clear that that was something that I really wanted to explore. Um, so it's kind of thinking about how best I could get the design to, to realise to realize that. Um, when in my early research as well, I was going through all the, um, through all the papers that you were going to be having at the conference and kind of pulling out things that had quite a kind of visual, seemed visually exciting or kind of triggered something visually for me. Um, and that was all of the that was all of the abstracts from the participants. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Cool. Yes. Um, and one of the ones, in fact, which I didn't end up going with, but I did a bit of exploration with, was there's a few that mentioned kind of uh, using trap cams, and I was looking yeah. into the kind of the outcomes of those. And there are particularly beautiful moments of where when they're taken at night and there's a large flash that the subject, or maybe it's not the intended subject, but a subject ends up with yeah. this kind of halo-esque glow of where the flash has hit them. And it's because the camera is bringing up the best quality or this kind of bright contrast, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But you kind of end up with this kind of edge and this outline to it that seemed to kind of, it became its own thing. And then that kind of spoke to that kind of gray area in the kind of literal sense of ideas I was looking at as well. So that was going to be one thing that I was going for. Then actually in any kind of application that I began testing, it seemed very... Uh, aggressive and quite confrontational um, mm -hmm. and maybe not the kind of more welcoming uh, um, kind of things that we wanted the, the website to do. So I kind of left that behind and then kind of began instead to, to look more into this kind of typographic stuff, which I found interesting. And what that, how I then realized that in the end was settled on this typeface called uh, Arbitus by Caroline Lack, um, which kind of became, became the word mark of digital ecologies. Uh, I really liked it because it, it, it kind of did exactly what I wanted it to do or what I was looking for in being able to one hand really kind of, there seemed to be something about this kind of like early digital vernacular um, in it kind of, when it's quite small, it almost looks a bit pixelated or that it looks kind of like kind of edgy in a way that mm -hmm. kind of that early design work was. Um, but then it also there seems to be something kind of organic about it. Like it looks kind of a bit uh, like it's under a microscope or it looks like there's kind of some viralness to it. Um, so that was kind of ticking those boxes, which I wanted it to with that kind of speaking to both disparate parts. Um, and then also just typographically, it locked up really nicely. Um, I mean, this is early stuff. It's not been, uh, the, the kerning on it's not great, but 
just when I jot it down, like the way that the G and the O and the I and the L in particular are sitting, they kind of those are very nice, get the lead in quite tight and they kind of seem to naturally work. Um, so when that was happening, I was like, yeah, we're on to, we're on to a winner here. This, this seems good. Um, for me as well, the typeface seems to do different things at different scales as well. Like the closer mm. you look, there's, there's more, there's more to it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I was really lucky having you guys, um, kind of when we were discussing how the design was going, that you were just kind of up for stuff as well. I think this is something in for maybe another, uh, somebody else who I was discussing design ideas with, this might've been one of those that's kind of like, oh, that would be nice or that would be fun to do, but they're not going to be up for this. Whereas real yeah. testament to, uh, to you three that it was actually, no, we're well up for this. Like, yeah, let's try it. Let's see how it works. Like, kind of, and that excitement about it was led for a really, yeah, enjoyable design process. Um, we paired it with uh, just Roboto, pretty standard sans serif typeface. Um, but it, this was kind of more important, just being able to do a job in that uh, there was going to be quite some of the pages on the website are really text heavy. Um, and we needed something that just was like super clear, super legible, um, and provided enough contrast. Like the display typeface that we've just seen, that was doing like a lot of the kind of aesthetic things that I wanted to get across. So it meant that this could just actually just sit back and just, just you know, kind of get out of the way, let the, you know, let the, the reader read the text. Um, okay, this is some of the imagery, which uh, actually thinking about it, I was looking through again through my notes and actually it came in kind of quite late in the process, actually. Early on, it was just, it was all color that we were using. Um, I'll talk about that. I'll talk about that afterwards, but. Uh, the imagery, yeah, came in a little late. It was um, it was something that I was thinking about again when I was trying to span this thing of it being digital but also kind of ecological. And I was put onto it when I showed Alex Walker's uh, some of his type work on the on the first slide. He did another project which kind of had um, had some not too dissimilar marbling uh, effects. And when I saw that, I was like, ah, yeah, that really reminds me that I've had I had this series that I'd that I'd done, I think I did it with my mom in our garden in Manchester, um, just set up like a little rig in the back garden and kind of, and, and knocked these out. Um, and I think they're really, I really, really like them. I'm really grateful that we got to use them in the end. And I think they were successful in a few things. The first is that to me, they speak of an ecology in a very loose sense, whether that be uh, some graphs that are created through research or weather maps that we see on TV or yeah, like depiction of storms or just various patterns. Um, and they speak to that kind of very organic movement, whether we're, you know, this is, we're looking at uh, topologies or kind of routes that are taken or just various different systems that exist within various ecologies. I thought this actually could be kind of ambiguous enough that a lot of the people who will be arriving at the Digicology's website will be coming with these kind of maybe this maybe they'll be able to project onto these a little bit as well and they'll kind of be begin to see something within them or that they'll just be kind of uh, I don't know something kind of comforting about them perhaps but then at the same time whilst I hope that they kind of su successful in doing that that they also Kind of have a bit of a weird kind of uh, kind of digitalness to them, in that especially some of them, the, the two on the left in particular, and maybe the bottom right one as well. Yeah. If you really zoom in, there's a lot of kind of fractal shapes and a lot more kind of corners um, and kind of uh, and the way that they interact with the space. I thought was kind of it felt kind of quite early digital aesthetic. Um, yeah. Also, we were quite lucky in that the colours that we chose at the time have got a real vibrancy about them that works really, really well on screen. Um, mm -hmm. And that, I mean, obviously, marbling started out as a as as a printed a printed technique, so that's another beautiful way of capturing the colour. But for this, it was I think it's been uh, I think it's been successful on having kind of the way that it introduced colour to the website as well. Um, it always seems to be a movement to me. That's it, it, yeah, it's re it's really nice like that. There's something quite yeah transient mm. about it. 
Yeah, yeah. The only problem was is that whilst it introduced color, introduced a lot of color. <laughs> Um, and as I was mm. saying earlier, like, there were some areas which were very text heavy. So we began to have to, to think about, um, about how to kind of find that balance between the two. So the palette on the left, I don't think we use all of them in the end. This was kind of the starting uh, palette, at least kind of very earthy tones, very kind of a bit subtle, a bit more drawn back. Um, and mm. then we use them largely just as these kind of rounded boxes, which are different pieces of, of text, um, sit within uh, and that just kind of acted as this kind of mediator between the image and the text and that there was enough contrast being provided between the two so that kind of like to guarantee your legibility and just to not kind of completely overwhelm overwhelm the viewer mm -hmm. uh what's the next slide oh yeah they also provided a really um they could also be used just purely as pattern and kind of purely decorative in that sense as well and that's helped mm -hmm. us, I think, with the uh, with the socials, with the social media platforms that Digicology is using as well. Um, and that's and that's uh, and that's been nice to see that kind of roll out across different platforms. Um, I think, I think, I'm, I think that's everything that I want to speak about on these slides. Um, uh -huh. I've realised that I've made the last slide a thank you. Which seems oh, like it, it seems like an end. Although I'd like to, <laughs> I'd like to speak to you more about it and uh, maybe discuss some more questions. But I, um, I set it in our beloved sky blue and white of the Manchester City <laughs> <No. CFC>. um, <laughs> But I, shall I stop, shall I stop showing my screen, or was anything on this? In uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, I guess I just have. I, I don't know. Thanks so much, that Will. I mean, it was it's nice just to be able to share the kind of real amount of diligence and work and research that goes into it um really i was quite uh i was quite amazed i mean I, I expected you to do such a good job but i was quite amazed when we spoke for the first time after kind of pitching the idea for you and you had um you'd read all of the abstracts for all of the papers and you had a real idea about the kind of the way in which design and design can be used to explore the theme of digital ecologies, but also how ecology can be used in the design process itself. Yeah. So I guess I just have a kind of open-ended question, really, just, just to kind of end on. Which before, be before, about, you, before you ask that question, yeah. I just need to say in that bit that uh, the design that we arrived at uh, was, yeah, very research heavy and also like the process of creating it was like instrumental to the design that we ended up. So therefore I need to say in the research project, I need to shout out my mom because we were discussing a lot of those uh, ideas. I was discussing some of the abstracts. My mom did an art and ecology MA. So very much like, was like, yeah, super, super helpful. And then Liam Johnson, who helped build the website and obviously made design decisions uh, collaboratively. Um, and he was, uh, he was, he did a brilliant job. So very grateful to those two. So I feel like I can't end okay. without saying my like, Great. Yeah. gratitude well, to them. I I'm very grateful to, to both of them too, and you. Um, great, I mean, so yeah, I guess just, just maybe it's just an open-ended kind of thought to end on, just as a bit of a, something to think about for people watching this video maybe, is what, to what extent can design be used to explore uh, themes of environmentalism or, and vice versa, how much can ecology and ecological knowledges feed into the design process to create a more, I don't know, a more rounded uh, experience, design experience? It's a good question. Um, I, in this project, there's been very, very clear examples of, I was reading this, I was researching this, and that directly informed this thing. Um, how much uh, that happens in my wider practice, such as how much I look to uh, the environment and ecology to inform things, I don't know. Uh, and actually, in some ways, in a purely personal capacity, I kind of want there to be a separation between the two in that uh -huh. I don't want like to always be thinking about design and that actually I quite enjoy uh, kind of having an experience of kind of the environment and uh, kind of working to this design practice. And there's kind of been two yeah. separate. But then obviously, the other side of me is like, wants to totally have the holistic approach and look at the total situation and then therefore kind of see it actually no you can't separate the two and of course there are kind of 
uh, inspirations and things happening that I'm probably not even conscious of, but are happening. Um, in terms of design and what it can do, um, I don't know. I think, I think there was something that I enjoyed about this project, which I wasn't really expecting, which is I haven't done work in this field before in terms of like the academic field, uh, apart from my like, mm-hmm. own personal studying. But in terms of like, yeah, creating work that's going to exist in this field was new to me. Um, and I, for my research, I guess it seems pretty different to like other academic conferences and other things that exist in that. I, you'd know far more than I would. But um, I hope it's kind of like added something to that and made it maybe seem a bit different or that it kind of shows uh, kind of clearly how you and digital ecologies want to kind of position yourselves um, in mm-hmm. kind of doing something maybe a bit different or a bit more progressive, perhaps. I don't know. Um, but that's kind of potentially one way it could work. Um, but as with like everything, design is only ever a service and a vehicle. And whether there is anything inherent about design, probably not. And actually, what we're doing is just taking the stories and the people who are telling those stories and trying to do the best we can with it and communicate those fully so um so yeah it's always got to be about the people in the stories i think cool. well i think you've done a very good job of uh creating a space for those stories to be told so good uh i guess we'll end it there i'll just say thank yeah thanks so much for talking to us today and thank sharing you. the design process with us thank you and i very much look forward to the to the conference itself and all the future um future things that digital ecology is going to bring into the world it's very exciting Great. And, and for anyone watching this, uh, the registration will close this Thursday um, for the conference next week. So mm-hmm. uh, if you haven't yet, you can go on our website and just click your email in the, in the box on the homepage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see you there. I'm excited. Right.